Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a sulfur emerger. And unless you're into the earthy tones or the olive or blue dun colors, um, these are about the prettiest mayflies that I think I've ever seen. So, and I use some interesting materials and we'll get into that in a moment. And we're going to tie today's fly on a size 16, a Daiichi um, 1150. It's got a little bit of a turned up eye. It's a short shank hook. I'm going to use these older dyed mallard um, feathers. They were dyed to match wood duck and they're the perfect color for the, some of the sulfurs I've seen around here. And this is one of my, it, this is the secret sauce. This is a shoelace that I tear apart and use the, um, the sulfur uh, parts of the shoelace. There's that dark blue dun hackle that I've used before. We're going to use super fine dubbing. Um, that's the uh, sulfur shade of the super fine dubbing. And we're going to hold it all together with an 8 aught pale dun uh, tying thread. So here we'll get that hook in the vise. And get our thread started. So I'm going to leave a long tag on this thread. And I'm going to use it to make the rib. But since the thread is a pale dun, I'm going to get out that Pantone marker. Uh, the dark brown one, and I'm going to color up a section maybe about three inches long. And we'll put it back in the uh, materials clip and kind of get it out of the way until we need it. And work our way back down around the bend. So that's a short shank hook. Um, this version is an emerger. And uh, I'm going to use... There's a little bit of that shoelace, one of the single strands that I've kind of pulled out. If you cut it short, about four or five inches, and it'll um, kind of pick loose from one end, and then you can just slide it out, grab a bundle of each color and slide it out. So that's that sulfur, sulfur color. Um, I think it, the material itself is, it might be trilobal, it floats, it works a lot like poly, it's very durable. And these, you can find these shoelaces everywhere. Um, I've heard folks use paracord uh, in a similar fashion. And um, if you can't get your hands on some poly or uh, if you want to experiment a little bit, and in the end, this might be cost effective. So we'll bind down the ends. And this is a bundle of those. Now, those mallard flank feathers were on the large size. I, I loved the color when I saw them and, and bought them. But they were um, kind of too long for almost anything, but maybe some streamers or something. So what I've been doing is using bundles of them and wrapping them around the hook. And then I'll just counter rib them and make them a little more durable. But they make a great nymph body done that way, and uh, in this case for this merger. So I'll get a couple of whips in here. We're going to use the rotary feature. These fibers aren't the most durable or strongest fibers out there. So um, if you want to wrap over a little super glue, maybe that's not a bad idea. And I'm going to wrap them toward me so that when I wrap the brown thread in the tag end in the conventional direction, it's going to be counter ribbing those. So we'll work our way forward. I'm going to get a wrap or two there, twist it underneath, and do a couple of cross wraps. And trim off the excess. So this next part, and we'll put another whip here so it doesn't come loose as we go. And I got that um, tag end of that thread kind of tangled with my tail, my shock. So I have to fiddle with it a little bit to get most of the fibers back where they belong. where if I had a director, if I wasn't the one-man band, somebody would yell cut, reset everything, and we'd start over. But um, this is the real world. If I made everything look perfect on camera, it kind of wouldn't be true to myself. 
and it's kind of a just minor inconvenience not really a giant issue here so we rip, put about four or five ribs with the uh, brown thread cross our thread wrap back over it and come back where we want the thorax to begin so we have a shock and a body it's kind of the right color got a little dark rib going on in there it's going to half float and half sink And here we have the uh, another chunk or the rest of that um, sulfur-colored strand out of the shoelace, the boot lace. We're going to tie it in at the back of the thorax, work our way up to behind the eye. In this case, I'm going to trim off the excess in the back. And this fly is going to be a hackle stacker. And um, that's more of a method than a, an actual pattern for me. So I experimented with a couple different things. Basically, there, I don't know, there are dozens of cripples and different kinds of patterns out there. Um, this is just something I kind of came up with. So we tied in a um, size 16 um, blue dun, dark blue dun hackle. And we went to the super fine dubbing. Guess this isn't a bad time to tell you to. If you tie these on a longer straight shanked hook, you could make something that looks more or less like a caddis. Um, change the colors, tie it a little bigger, change, again changing colors. You could imitate almost any mayfly. And, um, and like I said, if you trim the excess wing off here at the end a little longer, you could make this look like a, a cast, especially in the smaller sizes. So we'll start up front, we'll work our way back with the stubbing. I'm mostly trying to use the rotary feature here. There's a kind of a bullet shape that you're after when you're when you're making these the, the thorax on some of these bugs. And you'll see I think I just about did it there. So we'll stop there and trim off the uh, excess stubbing. You can't pull that loose. You have to kind of cut that like yarn. So, looking for our hackle pliers. And we're going to hold the front end of that uh, strand of shoelace up. And we're going to fumble a little bit, but this really is probably not, I'm probably making it look harder than it is, but I'm going to wrap up the, or up the uh, shoelace a little bit. I'm going to use my finger to pinch in the back every time I go around. And I'm in between the camera, which is a little awkward, but this is pretty much the way I would do it without the camera. And I want to go up high enough to where I feel when I fold it back over, it's going to cover that thorax and then work my way back down. And this old neck hackle, this is an old Chinese or Indian neck hackle from uh, many years ago. And uh, these feathers are like just about long enough, but this is a really cool color. I like to use this. So here my idea is I want to just throw a wrap or two over this, the stub of this um, tip of the hackle to hold it in place. So I kind of did a pinch wrap there. I'll snug it up a little bit. Now, I probably should have snipped it off right there, but I'll explain as I go. So I'm going to fold that shoelace back over, leave a loop there so I don't catch too many of the hackle fibers, get a couple of wraps over it, and I'm going to just guide it and pull it on top and pull it tight. And then here's where, this was my idea. So I was going to pull the tip of that hackle loose, and I did. And then just snip it off later. I don't think it's going to unwrap from the, uh, you know, the, the hackle stack stacker method. It goes around there a bunch of times. It's pulled down against stubbing. I don't think it's really going to unwind there too bad. Maybe it'll get chewed on a while. But and then I'm just going to sneak a whip finish in and and 
finish it right there at that spot at the back of the thorax. So, so far, again, I think this is easier than I make it look. You can get kind of set up and crank these out. I did two or three before I actually filmed one, and this is what I settled on. I was more or less experimenting with um, different materials, different colors, and, and settled on doing the sulfur and then filming it. So we snip the tip off of that hackle. Now here I want to just pull this back and I kind of want to cut at the end, at the back of the hook, I want to cut straight up and down. And I may have slid out and cut it a little longer than I want. So I go back in and snip a, about a sixteenth of an inch off and put a little shape to it. But that's pretty much the fly. It kind of looks like a mess. It kind of floats in the film. Uh, there's a distinction between the abdomen and the thorax in those wraps of thread using a thread collar that kind of, I don't know, it accentuates or it makes that look a little better. So I'm kind of satisfied with these. And I don't see any reason why I can't fish these and catch trout during the sulfur hatch. If you want to change colors and hook styles and imitate something else, let me know what you come up with and good luck. And if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. Until next time, be safe.